Welcome to Power Your Profits podcast, your friendly guide in bringing your business revenue to the next level. Listen as host Dr. Susie Carter hears inspiring stories of success from her fellow entrepreneurs and transformational leaders. Prepare to make significant change to your strategies as they unravel the secrets of building multi-million dollar businesses and the most effective tips on finance, marketing, and sales accountability. If you want to take your first steps towards explosive business growth, this podcast is for you. Without further ado, here is your host, Dr. Susie. How do you go from broken, broken, from poverty to prosperity? Well, my next guest, Sir Darren Jacqueline, stands as a paragon of a professional achievement and philanthropic dedication with a career marked by significant accomplishments in life and dedicated to a global impact. Over 25 years, he's personally trained executives and teams from Fortune 500 companies showcasing his un paralleled expertise in corporate training. A seasoned world traveler, Sir Darren has visited over 50 countries, four continents, enriching global perspective, enhancing his ability to connect with diverse audiences, and as a world-class speaker and corporate trainer. He has shared his knowledge with over 1 million people worldwide and has directly impacted countless of lives through his engaging transformational sessions. He is a force to be reckoned with. Please welcome my guest, Sir Darren. Okay, I am so excited. And first of all, you got to tell everyone where you're coming from, because those of you that are watching <laughs> us, he is in his mobile office, aka his car. So share with everyone, Sir Darren, wh what are you up to? So I'm actually training right now for an Antarctica expedition coming up in January 2025 to raise awareness for mental health, which is a huge thing across the world today, and also to raise money to help us build 100 schools across the planet for some of the most impoverished children living around the world. And so uh, I am training every day. I'm hiking and doing various different hikes to get myself in the best physical, mental, emotional state of my life in terms of uh, peak performance as I prepare for this Antarctica expedition for awareness. And, uh, and so I just finished hiking, took a group of people hiking here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, where I live, my primary residence. And so we were delayed about an hour getting off the trail. We had some new people hiking today that uh, were just so inspired being out in nature. And yeah. they have, you know, busy lives and busy careers in their, their lives. And when they came out, after about 20 minutes, you know, they're, they're, they've got to be on their phones and checking their messages and all that stuff. And I'm like, just put your phone away and just be in nature. Listen to songbirds. And after about 20 minutes, they just kind of, oh. And it was like forest bathing. They're in this forest bathing right now for the last few hours. And we took an hour longer than expected uh, because people are just, just relaxing and de-stressing. That's one thing I love about hiking and being in nature is it does so much for our mental health and our mental well-being. And so uh, I'm here today in my car right now here in the parking lot of the hiking trail here in Vancouver, Canada right now. Well, I love that. So tell me about the expedition in our Antarctica. How long is it? What are we doing? How do we support you? Like this was not our agenda, but look, <laughs> I'm an advocate of mental health because uh, most yeah. of our right now, Sir Darren, which is amazing that you're having this conversation, it's anxiety and stress and depression. Absolutely. You know, so yeah. tell us about the trip and tell us how are, how far are you hiking? Like give us the skinny. Sure. Yeah, so uh, my my own personal journey, about four years ago, just before COVID-19, the big outbreak with that, I realized that I was statistically fat and overweight. I was traveling, you know, many days a year. I'm an entrepreneur. I've got multiple companies and an international foundation, um, international foundation. So I was traveling a lot, uh, like a lot of people do, right? Airports, fast food, different time zones, different times. And so... I was not taking care of my nutrition and health and fitness and food. I was eating a lot of fast food late at night, early in the morning, not the best choices I was making. And so I realized I was in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada. I thought, my gosh, I am getting quite a gut on me. And this is unacceptable. And so I thought, I'm not a gym guy. I've never really been to a gym. Don't really know how to use the equipment. Right. Um, you know, and I'm 48 years of age at the time. So I thought, you know, there's a couple of friends of mine on my Facebook that go hiking. I thought, maybe I can go join them on a hiking. So I actually phoned them up and offered to come out hiking with them. And uh, I thought, wow, this is really cool. Now, when I started, I didn't have any hiking boots or hiking pants or hiking shirts, nothing. I had right. jeans and a T-shirt and cotton socks. So I was just a few years ago, I started doing that, and I was consistent with it. And what happened was 
I started to document my journey on my social media channels. I ended up releasing 43 pounds in weight for a very short period of time from consistently outdoor hiking. I thought, my gosh, this is the best deal in town. Right. So, well, I, was, I had people reaching out to me through private messaging and through social media. Hey, can I come on hiking with them? I go, sure. So all of a sudden, you know, we got this big hiking group and all these people are consistently coming out hiking with me. That, that's why I never started that way. So what happened was a buddy of mine called me up about uh, two years ago and said, listen, for my 40th birthday, I'm going to Tanzania, East Africa, and I'm going to go climb Mount Kilimanjaro. Well, good for you. And he goes, I want you to come with me. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> He's like, what are you talking about? I said, listen, I am not an athlete. You know, you have to be a certain kind of person to do that. I said, that's just not me. I don't have the genetic makeup. He goes, there, listen, as you know, all excuses are equal. He goes, you're an overachiever in business and finance. You've done very well. You can, you've got a year to train for this. And I said, listen, Aaron, I says, but why would you waste your time and energy calling me and ask me to do this? He goes, because I know that you can climb Kilimanjaro if you train for it. So I, he challenged me, and I don't like to lose. I'm competitive. So I accepted the challenge. I trained for it, and I summited Mount Kilimanjaro in July of 2023. Wow. So then I got introduced to a gentleman who has done six of the top seven summits in the world. And his final summit is in Mount Vincent Mass up in Antarctica. And his big thing is about mental health. He was a former police officer, federal agent, uh, yeah. for almost 30 years undercover and, um, filled a lot of stress and a lot of, a uh, lot of challenges being in that law enforcement as our first responders do. And so I thought, wow, what a great way to use my knighthood, my business success to really bring awareness to mental health, but also to help the next generation of young men and women children around the planet to help build educational schools for them to help create safe environments for them because we have a huge problem with human child sex trafficking we have a big problem with mental health and there's so many things and so i thought why don't we combine mental health and we'll combine um raising funds for building schools and um let's make a difference so i'll use myself by self-leadership and do it and so that's where we are today uh training developing every day to go to mount uh, mount uh Vincent in Antarctica, the coldest continent on planet Earth. And do you like the cold? I mean, you do live in Canada, but <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's an adjustment to it. Um, preferably not. I like warm weather, but you know what? I'm a person who loves to make a difference in people's lives. I'm a big person. I just love people. I love building relationships with people. And so, I figured if I can do this, because you know, my backstory and um, you know is, is very unique and very interesting. How I grew up, my backstory, my current story, my success story. So if I can use my life as an example to enrich and empower and inspire other people's lives, then that's what I'm here to do on this planet while I'm alive. And so uh, if I have to get uncomfortable for a few, few weeks to be in the cold weather to do that, to save people's lives, then I'll sign up and do that. So is it a few weeks? That's how long the hike is? How long is the hike? Yeah, so we'll do it about seven to ten days depends on weather and weather conditions uh, and snow and ice. So it's Antarctica. We can't predict it, um, but we'll plan. We're over there for a couple weeks. We figure we can do it in probably seven days, might be 10 days. It all depends on weather and, and snowstorms and ice. And there's a whole bunch of factors that we take into consideration as part of our scenario planning. So as we prepare over 15 months, we look at best case scenarios, likely case scenarios, and worst possible case scenarios. And then we do all this scenario planning with those different guides to train and all that in different weather throughout North America. So the cool thing is we've now taken this to a thing called E2E. E2E is Elevate to Educate. So people go to hikingfundraiser.com, hikingfundraiser.com. They can come on hikes with me. Uh, our first hike is coming up in June 29th, 2024, or 2024 in Vancouver, Canada. And uh, people come out. It's a networking opportunity. You get a chance to connect, collaborate, be in community. And you meet some really influential people. Like we've had former Olympic athletes. We've had royalty. We've had very accomplished people. We've had millionaires, multimillionaires. We've had uh, investors. We've had entrepreneurs, CEOs. People from all walks of life, all different age groups come out. But the cool thing is we're building a global community of like-minded people. And the fun thing is, is people just love it because you get around an inspiring, collaborative, enriching, positive, supporting environment, which helps people in their mental health and mental well-being. But also, if somebody's going to start a business or, you know, doesn't know what their next steps are in their life of what they want to do, maybe they're changing careers or jobs or industries or they're single, they want to meet an eligible person. My gosh, we got some great-looking uh single people in the group as well so we've got the mix of everything and so uh with e2e elevate to educate we took my thing just to release weight and turn it into a hiking fundraiser now and we'll eventually over the next couple of years 
have hiking fundraisers all over the world. And every time we do a hike, we collect the money through hiking registration, through corporate sponsorship and merchandise sales. That money gets collected through Link Foundation, which is our international foundation. And then that money gets allocated towards building a school. So people get a chance to come out and hike for a cause while making a difference, while networking and connecting, meeting community. And then they get a chance to watch it all unfold on our social media channels. And if people want, they can sign up for a humanitarian trip and then come out and be a part of it and help us break ground on these new schools. And where are we building the schools at? So we started off in Liberia, West Africa, our first school. And our next school, I believe, is going to be in Honduras. And we're building them all over the world. We've got a whole strategic roadmap, the team that's building this. And we're doing a lot of research, a lot of due diligence. And uh, we got some really exciting things coming down the pipe in the near coming weeks and coming months and next couple of years of what we're going to be doing. And people can be a part of something that's going to really serve humanity and make a global contribution on the planet and create a ripple of impact. And so if you like being around positive, inspiring people, then join our global community at hikingfundraiser.com because you'll meet some great people and you'll build some great lifetime relationships. We have people all the time coming up and saying, thank you so much for introducing me to so-and-so. It's enriched my life, enriched my family, enriched my business, enriched my finances, my health, my fitness. So uh, that's I get great joy out of this and great satisfaction knowing that I can make a difference in people's lives and creating an environment where people feel safe, but they also feel supportive and enriched and empowered. Well, I love your, your, and just so our listeners know, we talked about it, you know, on your bio, you're not raising 40, 50 grand, you're raising a boatload of money. So talk about- $100 million over the next 10 years, 100 million. Yeah, boatload, boatload, y'all, boatload, right? <laughs> yeah. So talk about your book, because I, I think, you know, the, in becoming, right, when I look at your book and your book title, share, like, until I become, right, share, what was the precipice of that book and- you know, what, what does it mean, yeah. you know, that we're all a network of conversations, which I believe um, that's a Absolutely. part of our teaching as well. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this is the book. It just came out. I was just signing some here in the parking lot here at the hiking trail. This is the book plus a hundred pages, but it's a practical book. There's no fluff or filler in it. And the cool thing about it is, um, so to tell my partner in life, she has three academic degrees from the top universities in Canada. She's also got a master's degree in curriculum education. And uh, she was a high school teacher for 35 years. She's very methodical, attention to detail, and she's extremely organized. And during COVID-19, um, the last 30-plus years, I've actually uh, written in a journal every day. I write in a journal every day as a non-negotiable daily activity. And so I've captured a lot of my life throughout my journals over the last 30-plus years. And success leaves clues. You know, I'm somebody that didn't go to regular public school, misdiagnosed a learning disability, a reading disability, failed grade one of public school, then was put into special education from grade one to grade 12. I'm somebody who's also had lots of failures, adversities, setbacks, and challenges in my life. I'm somebody also who was on welfare. I was homeless, living on the streets, eating my next meal of a garbage dumpster. I've also had an R9 credit rating. And an R9 credit rating through Equifax, the training union credit, is the worst possible credit score you can get in the metric system. It's worst case scenario. And I've had the worst possible credit score you can get in North America. So I'm somebody who's had a lot of adversities and challenges. Uh, somebody who, you know, barely passed public high school, never went to college, university. Um, but today in my life, you know, I'm a multimillionaire financially. I, I've contributed, you know, I'm, I'm committed to $100 million of giving away over the next decade towards global philanthropy. I've been to NASDAQ three times during the closing bell at NASDAQ. I've helped take a company from startup to a multi-billion dollar company as a team member and also a board of directors member. Uh, I've been to the Cebu Exchange in Chicago to ring the opening bell there. And I've built some very successful companies as an entrepreneur building teams of people. And so statistically, for people who like numbers, I'm somebody statistically who should not be statistically where I'm at today in my life. Yes. Financially, I've achieved financial independence. You know, I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro. Now I'm doing Mount Vincent. So Until I Become is a book, again, it's less than 100 pages of practical tips and techniques and strategies I did in my life to achieve what I've done today because success leads clues. Now, one of the things I talk about in the book is all we are is a network of conversations. What does that yeah. mean if we unpack that? What is a network of conversations? As human beings, if we're up in the International Space Station looking down on planet Earth and we see all these human beings on the planet, what we're doing is we're all having a network of conversations. E2E, Elevate to Educate, our hiking fundraiser, is all about a network of conversations that anything you really, really, really want in your life, 
is going to come from talking to strangers and having conversations. Conversations, when we start having conversations, opportunities get created out of having conversations. And so the more networks of conversations you're having, the more opportunities are going to get created. So uh, I always share with people, we don't have money problems in life. We only have thinking problems in life. There's two types of people. There's people who make a lot of money, who don't know where to put the money. There's people who don't make enough money, who live paycheck to paycheck or not even paycheck to paycheck. So the key thing is, if we change your environment, we change your conversation, which then change your outcomes and change your results in your life, right? That's and so that. until it becomes all about showing people things that how you can, you know, like I have over 7,000 written goals for my life. They'll say over 7,000 written goals. Man, there's not enough life in your life. You're never going to achieve that many goals. And I said, here's what my book talks about. In my book, I talk about that most of your goals and dreams, most of your goals and dreams do not require your actions. You'll be like, what do you mean? Completely different mindset. Most of your goals and dreams do not require your actions because I talk about and until I become. It's about changing, creating teams and teamwork, right? So I have teams of people that I get. Now, when I first started, I was flat broke financially. I didn't have any money. Right. So I went to high schools and college universities and got students to volunteer to come do practicum and work experience with me. That's yeah. how I started. I was flat broke financially. So I show people how you can do creative ways and things in your life to achieve whatever you want to achieve life on your terms, whatever it means to you. So to me, until I become this book is a legacy. It's being used in college universities now and around the world. It's being used in businesses, book clubs. Um, you know, I get messages and letters from people, still handwritten letters, postcards to this day. of People saying, thank you so much for how much your book has enriched my life. And I've now passed it on to my children. Uh, I'm, my kids are using it in school. Um, so that's that's a blessing for me and a gift to really serve humanity and make a difference because I never thought I was ever going to write a book. I had no interest in writing a book. Right. But what happened was I had so many people request me to write a book. Eventually, Ted Taylor said to me, he said, Darren, we're going to take everything out of your head. I'll design a curriculum. We're going to create a book with it. And it's a, it's been a huge home run. It's made a difference in a lot of people's lives and created a huge ripple of impact. So I'm excited Isn't about it. It's amazing, it. right? When you're like, oh, okay, I'll write a book. How hard can that be? <laughs> <laughs> You are listening to another episode of Power Your Profits podcast. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsors. Are you tired of struggling to take your business to the next level? Power Your Profits is the game-changing book you've been waiting for. Dr. Susie Carter, creator of the Predictable Success Method, reveals her proven strategies for explosive growth. From daily operations to marketing systems, this comprehensive guide empowers you to achieve predictable revenue and profit growth. Don't miss out on this invaluable wisdom. Transform your business today. Find your copy at books.poweryourprofits.com. Are you tired of pouring resources into strategies that don't work? Say hello to Dr. Susie Carter, your future fractional COO. With Dr. Susie in your corner, your business can skyrocket to seven figures and beyond. With a track record of creating thriving businesses, trust that you are in good hands. Head over to coo.poweryourprofits.com and let us put some magic into your business growth. So talk well, about how you, how you support people in taking their obstacles and opportunities because you have a strategy for that. Yeah, so the key thing is, is that, you know, it's a crisis or an opportunity. And so if you and I were to watch, let's say, example, CNN News, for example, uh, people watch and they feel, uh, you know, uh, negative or they feel triggered by it or like, oh my gosh, the news is so depressing. I look at it as opportunity zone in terms of obstacles into opportunities. So the thing is, is that I'll give you an example. I was just hiking just recently, just, just a little bit ago with a former police officer. He was just hiking with me and he said, Darren, I just retired from law enforcement. And he says, how do I now become an entrepreneur or a business owner? I right. said, well, you learned a lot of skills as a law enforcement officer about how to read human behavior, how to do detective work, how to run, you know, files, investigative work. You learned a lot of stuff in your, your, your career as a government, uh, federal employee, right? As a police officer. And so now what you do is some things are secretive and you can't talk about that. And that's your oath and that's your, what your sworn of I get that. But there's some things that, you know, are already out there in the public domain that are in the public library or on the internet that you can share in a practical way. So now it's turning that obstacle where he's stuck as a retired police officer to now turn that obstacle into an opportunity. So the key thing is it's training your mindset to see when 
people are in a crisis, when people are in a setback, a challenge. So I'll give me an example. When, when in life, when, you know, our plumbing doesn't work, we call a plumber. When you don't yeah. feel good, you go for a massage therapist, a chiropractor, a reflexologist, an acupuncturist. Um, you know, you do all these, these people. So when you're in pain or discomfort, there's industries and careers and jobs that are created out of that. And they're solving a problem. So the key thing is, you want to look at how can I solve a problem and get paid for I'll give you an example. I, uh, a couple I met many years ago uh, when I was traveling, their dream was they wanted to become paid dancers. They wanted to travel the world and just dance, this couple. I'm like, okay, so how can you get paid to travel the world and do what you love and love what you do while well, dancing? They're like, what do you mean get paid to dance? I'm like, yeah. So they actually applied for the cruise ship industry, and they actually got hired and contracted to travel around the world on cruise ships and teach people how to dance. And up until COVID-19, they traveled the world in many countries for a number of years, all expenses paid, and their finance paid for it. Now, they didn't get rich or wealthy from it. They made a great living and had a lot of fun and met a lot of great people. But they yes. had a chance to live their dreams. So the key thing is, is number one is turning a crisis into an opportunity. Everything in our lives has benefits and drawbacks. There's always a balance of the benefits and drawbacks. But what happens is we always, most people see the drawbacks and the blind spot is they don't see the benefit. So the mindset is, it's okay. Here's the blind spot. I don't see the benefit. So start training, developing your mindset to start seeing the benefits and then change your environment of the people that you're around and the people you spend time with and associate with so they can start to help you unpack and start to see the opportunities and how you can monetize and turn those opportunities into multiple revenue streams, which I've done, right? Like I am. Um, I've been buying accounting firms and bookkeeping firms across North America recently with a partner. Why? I, I, I know nothing about accounting and bookkeeping. I'm not an accountant or a bookkeeper, but there's a big problem right now in North America with accounting and bookkeeping. The average CPA, Chartered Professional Accountant, in North America is 61 years of age. They're a baby boomer. Right. Between now and the year 2030, over 100,000 licensed CPAs are set to retire as baby boomers. So they have these practices with all these clients they're doing taxes and bookkeeping and payroll. So what we do is we leverage other people's money, investors' money, to go buy these cash flow producing businesses, then acquire them and do a roll-up strategy. We'll build that into a $50 million company over the next four or five years, then we'll sell it, and then take that money and then go buy more businesses. Because here's the thing about businesses. It's easier to acquire revenue than to create revenue. So I'll be able to go and they want to do a startup wait, 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 Darren, say that again because that's juicy. I, I need our students to hear this one. Say that again. It's easier to acquire revenue than to create revenue. Yes. It's easier to acquire revenue than to create revenue. It's easier to go buy revenue from an already existing proven business model or business system. Yes. Okay? So a lot of people want to go buy a startup company, and they take all the risk and all their friends and family's money to hopefully see in three to five years this business grow and scale and develop. And right. as we know, statistically, most businesses don't get to five years. Most companies don't get to three years statistically, right? So it's easier to acquire it than to create it. So go already find an existing business that the owner of that business wants to retire. They're sick and tired of the business. There's been a divorce, a separation. Uh, I just acquired another company where the person had to sell the business because of a medical illness. And they just want to go to the business because of a medical reason. And so we did some uh, incredible creative financing on how to structure it, where actually I put no money out of pocket to buy already an existing cash flow producing business. Juicy. So talk about how has your knighthood, like tell that story, right? Because I love, sure. you totally have just a, you know, a hero story of from nothing yeah. to something. And you can tell by your attitude, your mindset that you generated it. So how are you using your night? First of all, how did that happen? And then how are you using <laughs> it to leverage your business and leverage yeah, great your, question. your philanthropy work? Yeah. So in 2011, I remember seeing Sir Richard Branson, right, from the Virgin Group. And I remember, you know, seeing a lot of things on the media about him and social media and on the Internet and, and reading his books as well. And I was like, wow, wouldn't that be cool? So I just in my mind would visualize back in 2011, wouldn't it be cool if I would became Sir Darren Jacklin? Sir Darren Jacklin. I was just, you know, men of, you know, thinking about this in my mindset. I actually wrote it down as one of my 7,000 goals to be united as Sir Darren Jacklin. I had no idea how it was ever going to happen. Yeah. So what happened was, um, I've had a chance uh, to travel the world multiple times. You know, I, I spent 25 years as a very successful corporate trainer in 50 countries on four continents. 
So as I was traveling, I was going to charity events, fundraising events, different events where I'd meet a lot of different centers of influence and influential people. And so I got a chance to meet some really influential people over the years, kept in touch with them. And I'm all about being relational, not transactional. That's the key thing. Be relational, not transactional. There's a lot of people today that are on social media that are transactional, but not relational. They're not building relationship equity where people get to know you, like you, and trust you. Okay? So what happened was uh, in 2022, I got referred to what we call the Royal Order, which is actually over in Spain. And uh, I was nominated by two people that have already been knighted that um, introduced me to the Royal Order. And so I got a telephone call in January of 2022 saying that, uh, you know, your name has been submitted and uh, you're under review. And would you be open to spend the next four to six months under review and through due diligence to see if you qualify to be knighted to Sir Darren Jacklin? I'm like, so, okay, sure, I'm open to it, but I've got a lot of questions. It's part of my discovery due diligence process. So my first question was, how much does this cost? Like, do I have to write a check? And they actually took offense to that because it's, you can't buy your way into the whole order. Right? It's right. like a Nobel Peace Prize. You can't buy it. So I was thinking, well, it's kind of like, hey, if I become the title sponsor and I become a corporate sponsor and I write a check, maybe I can be a, I can get this. And they're like, no, 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 it doesn't work that way. Right. So I realized there's over 400 people in the world that were nominated. Over 400 people globally from all walks of life or all these different countries around the world. And I thought, okay, well, how many people are they going to select? And I was told there was less than 25 people. It's actually 24 people they selected. So what I learned was that, um, so there's a whole bunch of questions I had to go through, background checks, police background checks, social media audit, reference checks, all these things over a six-month due diligence process. Yes. And um, so there's eight different categories. And I was chosen in the categories of global entrepreneurship and global philanthropy. And uh, so what happened was um, in about April of 2022, I realized, okay, I'm getting shortlisted, shortlisted, shortlisted here. Uh, you know, the questions, the interviews, the, the frequency of back and forth communication. Um, and then I met with the Royal Family a couple of different times as well. And so... Um, in June of, uh, June of 2022, I got knighted to Sir Darren Jacklin. Uh, you know, normally we fly over like to Spain, but because of COVID-19 and all the rules and lockdowns, I actually flew to the United States of America to Las Vegas and I got knighted at the uh, Venetian resort. We, they rented the resort there, the hotel, and that's where I was knighted. And so I got knighted. So out of 400 plus people were nominated globally. They chose 24 people, uh, 15 men and nine women, two Canadians a few Americans and the rest are from all over the world. And so 24 of us got selected and that uh, was an incredible experience. And so I leverage my knighthood now to make a global impact. Um, one is to building these hundred schools around the world uh, through Link Foundation and through Elevate to Educate. And the other one is to really create awareness through mental health. So the knighthood, it's opened up a lot of doors for me. It's gotten me access to a lot of influential people around the world and a lot of seats and a lot of incredible tables with some really influential people. And so I use it as a strategy to leverage it to make a better difference in the world and make a bigger difference in the world. So that's how I'm using my knighthood is to leverage it to make a greater difference in the world. I love that, right? Because it is, it's all about, you know, I always tell my students and my clients, it's a game, right? How are you playing the game, yeah. right? Don't get caught up in Absolutely. the specifics of it. Don't get, don't believe your ego, your she-go, your press, right? Stay Absolutely. humble. <laughs> yeah, um, so true. I love that. So how can people, first of all, how can people get your book? Because it's very fascinating. So I have yeah. your hiking link, but where? how do we get your book? You can go to you can go to Amazon.com or .ca and just go until I become, or you can Google it. It comes up on Amazon, many different book websites all over the world. Um, you know, it's, it's in many different online bookstores and bookstores called Until I Become. Or you can go to UntilIBecome.com, UntilIBecome.com. Order it. You'll love it. It's a great book. And if I have a chance to meet you in person sometime, and I'll, I'll sign the book as well. Um, yeah, you know, the book to me is about making a difference in people's lives, and I get great joy because here's something I like people to write down. Your success is someone else's miracle. Yeah. Your success is, or my success or your success is someone else's miracle. Really sit with that and just let it feel the words that my success is someone else's miracle. So the more prosperity, the more abundance that you create in your life, the more you you can enrich and bless and be of service to other people because your success is someone else's miracle. 
I love that. You have been just a breath of fresh air and a great reminder. If you want to support the uh, cause, please go to hikingfundraiser.com. I'll put it in the show notes. And listen, if you know somebody needs to hear Sir Darren's words today, I need you to forward this podcast. I need you to post it on your social media, share with people because this man, I got goosebumps just talking to you. I'm excited. Let's go hiking, Sir Darren. Absolutely. Love to bring you out. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your stewardship. Thank you for being grateful to be here. You know, obedient to the call, right? You're obedient Absolutely. to the call. So we appreciate you. You are a beast and we'll support you in your going to Kilimanjaro. We'll go go make a difference. Or Antarctica now, right? So Antarctica, yeah. Mount Vincent, yeah, in Antarctica. So um, I'm assuming your social is Sir Darren Jacqueline Duck on yeah. social. Yeah, you just Google my name. Yeah, you'll come up on all the social media channels. Just Google my name, Darren Jacqueline or Sir Darren Jacqueline, and you'll see me all over the social media channels. And you can follow what we're doing and come out hiking with us or support the hiking cause. And uh, you'll meet some great, great people. Have a great time. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Thank you for who you are. We appreciate it. My pleasure. You. And we look forward to watching your journey. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Power Your Profits podcast. Let these building blocks from today's most successful industry leaders equip you with the necessary resources and tools to finally establish the highly profitable business of your dreams. Want to hear more? Listen to more episodes at www.poweryourprofitspodcast.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. Now is your time to rise to the top of your game. So be sure to catch our next episode. Until next time.